Hello everybody, it's time for Coffee with Bill. Well, today it's Canada Dry with Bill, hope you don't mind. Let's see what kind of nonsense is going on today. Well, this is definitely not nonsense. Three cheers for the men in blue. Over 100 police agencies are backing out of their agreement to provide security for the upcoming Democrat National Convention. Excellent. Many of us have been praying for God to come against the most evil political party in American history, and I now pray that God will unleash the hounds of hell on that convention. The girly man Democrats will get their sissy butts whooped by the feminists who are mad at the trannies. The Green Deal lunatics will be throwing feces at the corporate donors. Black Lives Matters will be beating up any white person who isn't on their knees. This might be a good time for all of us. With no police protection, I pray that the massive crime wave the Democrats have instigated finds its way to that convention and will burn it to the ground. And if the dirty Democrats suffer casualties, well, consider it an object lesson in Treason 101. Uh, Donnie Woods posts the question, should Christians judge? <laughs> Donnie knows the answer to that. Absolutely, Christians are to judge. Jesus himself tells us in John 7, 24, do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. The Bible also commands us to speak truth and to bring justice. American Christians have failed miserably on both counts. The Christian church has been shamefully silent when they should have been speaking out loud and clear over the evils of liberalism taking over schools, the elevating of sexual perversion into a new national religion. The pulpits of America should have thundered against lying, corrupt politicians. And people want their pastors to speak out. I see here, WorldNet Daily is reporting a 2020 National Pulpit Survey by D. James Kennedy Ministries that found 99% said that it was extremely important for ministers to address religious liberty persecution issues from the pulpit. The figure was 98% for abortion and 96% for issues of sexual identity, including transgenderism and homosexuality. The people want the pastors to speak out. I just ordered a new patch for my vest. It says, Black Robe Regiment. The Black Robe Regiment were pastors in colonial times who spoke out forcefully against tyranny and evil in the land. And today there are about 2,000 pastors who are stepping up to call out the evil that is sweeping across our nation. The Black Robe Regiment is making a comeback. <coughs> <laughs> ah, the city of Minneapolis, where all these riots began, is still under siege by militant criminals. Neighborhoods have begun setting up barricades and armed civilian patrols are keeping watch. Many black veterans are also arming themselves and joining their white neighbors in guarding homes and families. Thank you to those black veterans for stepping up and defying the racist mob. One good thing about the 2020 Democrat attack on America is that it shows how vital Second Amendment gun rights are to the survival of the nation. I bet the Democrats didn't count on that, but huh, being smart is not what they're known for. Uh, reparations, reparations, reparations. The never-ending mantra, which is code for theft, theft, theft. Well, here's my take on reparations. None of the crybabies have ever been slaves, and those they intend to shake down have never had anything to do with slavery. But if you want to talk reparations, try this on for size. According to FBI crime statistics, blacks make up about 13% of the population, but are responsible for 65% of all violent crime in America, including 50% of all murders. You want to talk about reparations? Fine. Perhaps it's time for us to talk about the black community should pay reparations for the massive crime wave they have inflicted on America for the last 50 years. Now that would be proper use of reparations. Actual perpetrators paying reparations to actual victims, not this fake slavery nonsense. And here's another critical issue that needs a major cleanup. 
Child Protection Services. Oh, the name sounds really good until you realize that it is another agency that has been weaponized by flaming liberals to come against conservatives and Christians. In Texas, a four-year-old boy was returned to his parents after the Texas Supreme Court ruled that there was no evidence of abuse. But the Child Protection Services listed that family on the child abuse registry anyway, something that will hurt that family for the rest of their lives. You know, I'm considering a run for office as a Constitution Party candidate and initiating a widespread investigation of Child Protection Services will be a top priority. Far too many families have been severely hurt by false accusations and trampling all over their constitutional rights. Typical militant liberal tactics. <laughs> I see here, John Brennan, Obama's CIA director, is hopping mad that he is now blocked from accessing classified information. Brennan is the CIA director who turned Muslim while serving under Obama. <laughs> Gee, what could possibly go wrong there? I have to ask the question. Brennan is no longer employed. He has no official position, except possibly as a defendant in the near future. Why in the world should that man have access to classified information? I have a feeling that a few terrorist nations <laughs> are mad because Brennan no longer has access. Well, let's end with some encouragement from the words of the Bible. In Joshua 1.9, the Lord God says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you may go. Oops, I forgot to say anything about the coronavirus. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for watching, and America bless God again. <laughs>